welcome to my presentation, how to migrate PowerScript to C-Sharp using the .NET data store. Unnecessary disclaimer. And then the session agenda. We will have an introduction. Then we talk about Web API and especially how to structure the Web API for an existing Power BI application. Defining the Web API, implementing the Web API, and the template based approach. Next, we talk about defining a new UI, how to connect it with the Web API, and the case study. A few words about me. My name is Gianluca, or Gian, or Luca, as you like, Italian, living in Spain company based in Estonia, development team based in Eastern Europe, customers all over the world. I'm visiting my customers for PB Open, Agile project management, and software development lifecycle consulting, automated testing, and IT strategy. Company profile. My company, Enable Development, is an Appian consulting partner and helps company to enhance the productivity and the quality of their development by providing consulting, training, mentoring, and software development services. We have more than 100 customers all over the world and uh, a network of consultants, mainly uh, freelancers, to provide services to companies. We don't hire out IT specialists. We manage projects directly. Now, let's go to the core part of the presentation. So, as you are at the Elevate conference, you already know everything about the evolution of Power Builder. This journey, started several years ago, shows that C Sharp is our destination. Appian has given Power Builder a well deserved future by wisely choosing C Sharp and .NET Core. These two key elements allow us to migrate our huge code base to a modern, rich, stable, and scalable architecture, bringing the power of the data window and the productivity of Power Builder to the next level. The architectural style of the Web API exposes the business logic with a lightweight and expressive approach. The center of this migration is the .NET Data Store. It brings the power of the data window to C Sharp and enrich the data store uh, API with methods that are more natural for .NET. The .NET Data Store is both elegant and easy to use for PB programmers, yet it's a C-sharp code and uses the full power of .NET. The PB UI improved starting from Power Builder 2017, but the original architecture and limitations remain. Today, comparing a desktop PB UI with, for example, a UI written in uh, React is eloquent. Responsive and mobile UI are fast and reactive, and you won't miss at all the desktop UI. How to structure the web API for an existing app? You have a monolithic Power Builder application. How would you structure it as a web API to expose the business logic? A web API is mainly composed by controllers and services. You can structure the web API in several ways. By entering, uh, entry-based structuring is basically mimicking the CRUD entries. By windows, so you are exposing the public methods. By module, uh, that is a cohesive group of functionalities. In any case, the Web API must be kept as stable as possible, as it's the foundation of the business logic exposed to external applications. Let's compare the uh, approach that we have seen. Um, the entity is more data-oriented, but requires a bigger restructuring of the existing logic. The window approach is more user-interface-oriented, but follows the current UI style and potentially oblige the external application to follow an unnatural approach. The module-based 
tries to expose functionality by logical cohesion. Well, the right choice depends on the application complexity, on the available resources, and on the degree of flexibility that is required. Defining the Web API. So should we create first the UI or the Web API? They are interdependent. A successful approach consists in describing the current UI by window, list all the methods that need to be called by the window. In this way, whatever structuring approach you use, the Web API will be structured progressively. We create two documents, the UI specification and the Web API interface. Let's see in detail. First, let's document the UI requirements and the Web API by module or entity or window. For each window, we provide screenshots of the existing interface, functionalities, filters, and logic. For each method, we indicate the verb, the input, the output, description, and the data windows involved. And it's highly recommended to prototype the new interface. At the end of this process, you have a description of the new UI and the Web API definition. This document can be used for estimating the effort of implementing a new UI. You have all the elements that you need. Implementing the Web API. After creating the new UI specification and the Web API structure, it is time to implement the Web API following the approach that has been chosen. So we create the controller, we create the interface and the related service. We add a method in the controller for each method of the Web API. So we follow basically the documents that have been prepared earlier. Then we add a method in the interface service. We migrated the related data windows. We implement the method by migrating the PowerScript code by using data store, SQL executor, and so on. Then we extensively test the method by using tools like Postman. And finally, we document the test cases in the Web API uh, definition document. It is very, very important that you test extensively each method. Template-based approach. Methods of the Web API are very similar as is the structure of controllers and services. Instead of reinventing methods every time, prepare a template for each type of method and copy-paste, customize the template for each specific method. Prepare a set of templates from standard ones that you customize for the specific web API. Defining a new UI. Nowadays, a rich desktop-based UI can be implemented successfully in a web or mobile application thanks to the many UI toolkits that are available, for example, and design. But you don't need to create a new UI at your costs. Power Builder UI can still be used and connect to the web API. But there are cases in which you need to replace your UI. This is when you need um, a multi-platform desktop cloud, a native cross-browser multi-platform responsive web application, a native mobile application. Modern UI frameworks allow to implement the PB standard approach, for example, query mode, row sorting, filters, drag and drop. connecting UI and the Web API. At this point, you have the Web API implemented and the UI specs. It is important to note that because the Web API is the foundation of the business logic exposed to external services, it must be very stable and clean. So what's next? We write the UI code in case using mockup data. Um, in case we are using Power Builder, we don't need to restructure the user interface, but probably we need to adapt it a bit. 
then we need to call the web API, whatever language framework solution you use. By separating the web API from the UI, you have two responsibilities, who maintains the UI and who maintains the business logic. The UI part is perfect to be outsourced because it has no access to data or to the source code, just to the web API. The business logic continues to be maintained by senior Power BI developers. Now we'll see a case study. The initial application, the new UI, the prototype, the web API document, the controller and service implementation, and the application. Let's switch to the demo part. The next page will show an extract of the UI specification document that shows the existing UI, the business logic description, and the API calls. You can see the screenshot, the function description, and the API calls. Same for this other window. And for this one, we will show this page now in the prototype. The next page will show an extract of the interactive and responsive prototype has been created with Figma. So it's important to prototype the new user interface so that the user can play with the application, the prototype of the application, and see how the application works. Of course, the prototype is not a fully functional application, but the user will get a very good understanding on how the workflow and how the user interface works. This is the web API definition document. You can see for each method, the verb, the service, the method, the in and out parameters, and the description. Some examples of use are also useful. The next page will show an extract of the source code for the controller and the service. You can see here the registered persons and the registered one person. And here we have the service methods. Mm -hmm. They are using the .NET Data Store. And in fact, this is just the existing Power Builder code uh, converted into C Sharp. And here is the application, Power Builder Logic and JavaScript UI. Here we have the application running. This is not a prototype, a menu. You see here the menu bar, the language switch, and we have uh, a filter panel and we have a table that contains all the data and you can notice that uh, the uh, highlight is working and clicking on a row will allow you to use some functions depending on the status of the row. So we have three buttons that allow us to view details, to register employees and to register an employee. This is a report it is called from the view detail button that allows to print or to export PDF or to export as Excel or so on. And um, we have also other functionality like the ones that we have seen in the prototype. So uh, here we can select several users and bring them to the right part of the screen where we can register them. I will show also another function that uh, allows uh, a user to receive a training. So we select a row, we confirm the button, we have some confirmation screens, and then we can see the list of documents that is the same windows that we have seen in the prototype and in the existing UI definition. That's it. Summary. 
This method has been shaped on several PV open migration projects. We have a preparation in which we choose the approach that will probably be module based, but you can also choose Windows based or entity based. We create templates, probably reusing existing templates. Then for UI specification, we describe each window. We create the web API definition as we describe each window. And we prototype the new user interface. And then for the web API, we create the project and controllers and services from templates as we have defined before. We implement methods by using templates and converting the PowerScript logic into C Sharp, leveraging, of course, the .NET data store. We test each method and provide examples. Then we go to the new UI. We choose technology and UI toolkit. We can still use Power Builder as user interface if we want. We implement the UI following prototype and specifications, calling the API as described. 